great privilege to spend a few days uh, travelling up uh, mainly in Barkindji country and listening and talking to people and learning more about this incredible part of our state. And then last year in November I had the great opportunity to, to do it all again and, and head out again and um, meet some more people, but this time I started in Brewarrina and, and moved west. And some of the stories that people told were really so extraordinary that they have really rocked me to my core. I, when I first landed in Mildura, somebody said to me, there are too many straws in the glass. People say that this is a complicated issue, but the bottom line is there are just too many straws in the glass. And that story was repeated and repeated and repeated, but the tragedy that unfolded got worse and worse and worse. I remember somebody telling me at Burke that when they built that pipeline that you heard about uh, from the Murray River to Broken Hill because they wanted to have an excuse to drain Lake Menindi. Um, emus during the drought could smell the water in the pipe uh, but because they couldn't access the water they would perish along the length of the pipeline. And I remember my own experience of, uh, of being in Menindi one night and we were staying the night because the road between Menindi and Puncari, we were going to stay at Rob McBride's place at Talano Station, which is about a half an hour down the road, but we couldn't get through because it started to rain. Um, and, of course, unlike Sydney, if it starts to rain um, in the outback, uh, you just can't drive through. Uh, so we got the last two hotel rooms. Uh, I say hotel rooms. <laughs> More like uh, something out of 1965. Uh, in Menindi, and I remember brushing my teeth and uh, thinking that I'd perhaps spent too long on the road because my breath was kind of a bit smelly uh, and I thought, geez, lucky I'm brushing my teeth and then I got in the shower and I realised it wasn't my breath, it was the water. The water stinks. The water in the motel in Menindi and the rest of Menindi stinks. This is our fellow Australians. These are people who live in our state, who pay taxes to our government. Uh, the water stinks uh, in our lifetime. Uh, and so it's a privilege to welcome to Sydney tonight uh, and for the next couple of days some people that I've got to know over the last year or so and people who I think are uh, some of the most special people I know uh, and I'm very grateful that they're here with us tonight. Can I introduce you first of all to uh, Jane McAllister uh, who works with us at the Nature Conservation Council. Come up, Jane. Uh, but... Uh, He's also a water activist of long standing and uh, a councillor on Wentworth Shire Council and uh, she works for us now but she's been fighting this fight for no money for, for many, many years. Uh, can I introduce you to Julie McClure um, who was a gracious host to me and Jackie Mumford and Max Phillips um, last November when we stayed at Kalara Station uh, and we had... I was just telling Julie earlier, probably one of the best experiences for me in 2020, and let's face it, it wasn't a high bar in 2020 to have best experiences, but one of the best experiences I had in 2020 was to, to swim in the Barker River uh, at Julie's property at sunset, and uh, it is really one of the most special places, I think, in, in Australia. Uh, can I introduce you to Don Stewart, um, who's a member of the Darling River Action Group? You would have seen Don in that film that uh, we produced. Uh, Don took me for a drive um, around the Menindee Lakes and uh, as we were just remembering a moment ago, I've probably never seen so many kangaroos in my life and they were all jumping at our, at our uh, truck. But, um, but Don's been fighting this fight along with literally hundreds of other people um, who care deeply about this area because it's their community. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's been their home for generations. And finally, you saw him in both the films uh, and he's a real great champion, probably well known to you all already, um, but a great champion from the, for the Barker River, Rob McBride, uh, from Talano Station. I want to um, uh, add my acknowledgement uh, of Gadigal country that we're on tonight, but also especially pay my respects to uh, Barkindji um, and uh, the, the, the owners of the, of the Barker River. Um, we were supposed to have with us um, a couple of others. We were supposed to have uh, Derek Hardman, who's the uh, chief executive of the Barkindji Native Title, Title Corporation, uh, and uh, Uncle Badger Bates. Um, but you'll understand that uh, in, a, in a very difficult time, they had to make the tough choice not to come to Sydney because uh, it was just, in their view, a little too risky to, to come now that we've had another community transmission of COVID. Um, but I believe we're going to be able to get Badger on the 
video. Is that right, Max? No, we haven't got him at the moment. Um, but I want to welcome you all uh, tonight and, and welcome these guys to Sydney. We're, we're going to go to Parliament tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have a press conference under the Tree of Truth and uh, tell the story of the, um, of the Barker in the Menindee Lakes. Uh, and then we're going to don our visitor passes and go and knock on every politician's door that we can find, including, we heard recently, the Minister's door this, um, tomorrow. So that'll be an interesting meeting. Um, but just in the few minutes we have left, I thought we'd just uh, take any questions that people have got, any sort of reactions to the films that you've just seen tonight. Uh, you've got these guys and we've brought uh, these guys to Sydney because we just think that this is a story that needs to be told in Sydney. Because uh, geographically, um, the region that is affected doesn't have enough... Uh, there's just not enough people who live in the region um, for it to be an important enough issue on the political radar of New South Wales. And, and the way that we can change that is by people like yourselves coming um, and hearing the story and hopefully telling the story to, to many thousands of other people in Sydney. And that's really the goal of our trip um, over these next couple of days. But does anyone have a question for our panel? But while you're thinking about your questions, I might just get you to kind of do a little 60 second introduction about yourselves and talk about why you're here. Does that sound right? No, you're the mic. Testing. This is working. Hello, everybody. I'm Jane McAllister. I'm, a, um, as Chris said, I've uh, been with Nature Conservation Council for a year now and very grateful that Chris came out and saw um, us probably at our worst, actually, um, which was unfortunate for him, but it was fortunate for us because he's taken uh, to heart what he saw and who he met and uh, we're now working on events like these bringing the story to the city. As Chris mentioned, we are merely 30,000 votes west of Cobar. And um, as you heard on the film, I'm all right, Jack, bugger you all downstream. So I also um, have been on Wentworth Shire Council uh, for the past five years. It seems like longer. Um, and uh, that in itself has been a bit of a battle, but it's also been an excellent platform to raise the issue of the water uh, with a, a stronger voice. Um, I've been very privileged to meet the people to my left and the others who unfortunately can't be here. Um, and they have asked us to pay uh, their apologies to you. Um, it, it's a very difficult decision, but um, there has been, especially during the last year, as you might understand, as we've had lots of tourists traveling through uh, Barkindji lands, a, a lot of the high indigenous population townships like Wilcannia and Menindi have been living in fear of the virus getting to them because they are uh, highly vulnerable um, communities as well who have already been decimated by water inequality and water injustice. That's more than 30 seconds. It is, but, but that's all right. Pass over to Julie. Um, hi, everyone. I'm, my name's Julie McClure. I'm a mum of four. I live on the Darling River. I met someone tonight that has been to our place, um, aside from you, Chris. Thank you very much to the donors of this um, fantastic movie. Um, I guess um, our, our family's been on farming on the floodplain of the Darling for... Five generations. Um, we grow organic lamb. We grow organic oats and wheat and that sort of thing. Um, we are irrigators on the Darling, um, which is a pretty tough gig at Tilpa. Um, in the past little while, we've had to cart water to friends and family from our property because they live on the Darling and they don't have any water. It makes us pretty sad to think that um, what was once a magnificent waterway and, and the lifeblood of Western New South Wales 
is nothing but a bunch of puddles and at times it is luminous green and you're right, Chris, it does stink. Thanks, Thank Julie. You. John. I hope this is working. Can you hear me? Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming tonight. Um, there's been a few of us fighting for a long time to try to get this to air and we've been battling very hard and thank you very much to Nature Conservation through bringing us here and making the film available for you people to see and witness. And I surmise that you were pretty disgusted with some of the you know, scenes you saw of the devastation and the absolutely pungent green river. Well, if you were shocked by it, you can imagine the way we feel because we live with it. I mean, you've only had to sit and bear it for a very short period of time. But um, I represent a mob called DRAG, the Darling River Action Group, and my mates and I started this fight when the government decided they were going to put a pipeline on what they called the Crater Anna Branch of the Darling River. Because once they started to do that and we saw the plans that they had drawn up, we realised that it was nothing but total corruption and excuse the expression, but absolute bastardry by the government. And that bastardry has continued to this day. And if anything, it's getting worse and worse because they're getting away with it. So it's up to people like yourselves, if you can, to spread the word and help us with the fight so we can try to restore some sanity back into the river system and the lake system to the benefit of a whole lot of people. So thank you very much for your attendance. Thanks, John. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rob McBride. Um, I spoke to Uncle Badger this afternoon. I said, uh, you know, I respected that you couldn't come and he's like a brother to me and uh, he just said, look, pass on the message, Robert, that doesn't matter what colour you are, the fact is the people from Sydney should start to listen to the people of the Darling Barker and that we respect our river system. doesn't matter who we are and that's why it's great that you all turned up here today and you're taught, listening to what is going on. Chris and his team, uh, Nature Conservation Council, is trying to get the message out to the city people. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as Jane touched on, there's not many of us out there. Um, my family, family's been farming for 170 years. We respect the Barkindji in every regard. Uh, their communities are dying. The average life expectancy in Wilcannia for an Aboriginal uh, woman is 42, 37 for males. You've got a third world nation in New South Wales and your government is allowing this to happen. So I'm apolitical, but we need change and that's why Chris has got his team together and got us together hopefully tomorrow to start and continue on uh, telling what's going on to the reality in the outback is your rivers are dying and when your rivers are dead, there's nothing for you left and I please beg you to start looking into this more and more seriously, talk to family, make it the fight going forward. Thanks, Tom, Chris. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> so uh, Carl's over here with a microphone. Has anybody got a, got a question to open us up with, a fellow up the back there? extraordinary and we've just found out how extraordinary it is I didn't cry imagine if all of us were at Macquarie Street tomorrow Australia and the world would notice and there would be action thank you mate Any other questions? Yeah, to fill up there. Since we know that our government really doesn't care about royal commissions about anything, nor anything else proposed about their corruption. Can I can I jump in before you do? Um, because Rob and I might disagree slightly on this, <laughs> and and I already know what he thinks. We've had a Royal Commission. We've had a South Australian Royal Commission. The MDBA refused to turn up. The Federal Government refused to turn up. And the New South Wales Government refused to turn up. Disrespect in the highest. These 
bastards, sorry, Chris, think that they can do whatever they God bloody well like and uh, they're getting away with it. I don't see how another royal commission is going to change anything, but... From the other perspective, I guess we were instrumental in getting Jay Weatherall and the Australian, South Australian and the Labor Party involved in getting the Royal Commission set up. You had Brett Walker and Richard Beasley, who's just recently released the book. Look, it said there were criminals running this organisation. And so literally, uh, when the truth comes out in the future, um, you have got criminals in politics. And you can't keep on letting them go. You can't keep on letting them go. If we have a federal Royal Commission, they will be held account to account. They'll have to come. Now, in the South Australian Royal Commission, they had it, oh, oh, you're South Australia, you're dumb, we don't care what happens. And you go, well, hang on, it doesn't matter. It's, 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 it's the river system that runs through seven states and territories. Like, you, you've got to turn up. And, and if you actually read the book, um, Richard Beasley has just written recently, um, fascinating, just to show the degree of corruption and greed. So to disagree with Jane, we generally agree on everything because she's always right. But, <laughs> as I said, but realistically, we do need a federal commission. We do need the bastards in front of a judge. In a royal commission, you've got to say the truth. And the politicians in Parliament House can say whatever they want and get away with it. That's the difference. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Other questions? Yeah, up the back there. Hi. I just want to um, ask if there's been any politicians that have been out to talk to the locals at any point along the river? Oh, sorry. Can you hear now? Yes. Um, I just wondered how many politicians, if any, have been out to talk to community and seen for themselves what's going on? Great question. Um, we certainly had had a very small spattering of politicians come out, but they come out with blinkers and earmuffs <laughs> and they make sure that they get a guided tour on what they want to see, not what the truth is. And we even had the disgraceful thing from Beris Berejiklian Beris the other day she came out and she thought it was wonderful because they released a few thousand fingling fish into the Darling River and then advertised over the news for you all people to see the healthy state of our rivers. Well, you've just seen the truth of the healthy state of the Barker and that's what she reckons is good. Can I say there, there have been some good ones? Um, I, <laughs> I disagree with everybody. Um, Kate Fairman's come out a lot. Um, Basically, Justin Fields has come out. Um, Chris Minns, your next Premier. He came out... OK, well, <laughs> we can agree to disagree. He came out about five years ago when he was opposition water minister. And he said, Robert, this is really confusing. And I said, it's not. It's, it's really easy. There's water up there. It should be down here. Let's work it through. He is a great ambassador for water. So, look, we're talking to a lot of people tomorrow. Senator Rex Patrick, uh, Jackie Lambie's coming up in the near future. So we've got some heavy hitters out there. Sarah Hanson Young is coming up there. We have got some heavy hitters who are trying their guts out in the Senate. Um, and in the Upper House in New South Wales, you've got some great Animal Justice Party, One Nation, um, Shooters and Fishers. They're all actually working together to stop this floodplain harvesting crap. And so it's wonderful. In the Upper House, we're winning. It's a lower house. You guys have got to make change and make some, you know, change in the next election to try and get some integrity down there. But... You know, there have been a number of politicians like Gladys Berejiklian. When I had the uh, you know, 100 million fish around me dead, she came 400 kilometres south and said, look, I feel your, feel your pain. She was 400 kilometres south. So, yeah, there have been some good ones. There are some bad ones. But we work with the good ones and there are some great politicians, both state and federally. So don't be afraid. They're out there. We're trying to work with them and they're doing a great job. Can I ask a follow-up question? Because none of you have mentioned when Niall Blair came out. Can we, can we hear that story? There, were, there was a famous, and, and it was around the time that uh, Rob was holding that um, really nasty cod, and, and there were far too many of them. It, it, it was really confronting. Um, I was up there too. Um, I think we all were. You were there too, weren't you? We were all there to witness that. And Niall Blair came out in a boat surrounded by police officers because there'd been a death threat, and he whizzed past... And I don't know whether he did it on purpose, but in the act of whizzing past, all of these dead fish kind of, yeah, if, if I had a scratch and sniff thing now, we'd all just be going... Twice. twice. Yeah, he, he did it twice. I um, actually made a comment when he did that 
and it was filmed or recorded by the ABC. And as far as I know, it was only ever shown once. And that was as he went past in the boat and wouldn't stop to talk to us. I said, well, now I know there's two yellow bellies on the Darling River. <laughs> the poor buggers that are dying and the bloody prick that's in the boat that just went past and stunk <laughs> us out. Good one, John. And Chris, could I, could I, Chris, could I just yeah. say one thing? We're getting back to the Royal Commission, Noel Blair, this is going back a few years ago, I caught up with him at a water minister's meeting. And so I can say these things because I said under the Royal Commission so he can't sue me for saying it. I remember seeing him walking up to him and two gr big gorillas about 15 foot tall stood beside him. And I said, hey, Noel, how are you going? Good, thanks, Rob. He said, we're not watching anything you're doing. We watch fucking everything you do. I get a report on my desk every day of what you do. And if you fuck up, we're going to get you. Now, I said, that's funny coming from a New South Wales water minister. I'm a farmer. If you like watching sheep and herding sheep, that's fair enough. But I got to say that in a royal commission. So Niall Blair can't listen to this conversation and say, I didn't say that. Because Niall, it's in Hansard now, you moron. <laughs> so that's just a, where a royal commission can help. Because you can say the truth. You've got to swear by the truth. And if it's the truth, then screw him down the track. Because there will be justice for the river eventually, hopefully. Thank Thanks, you. Sorry. Just Gentleman swearing. over here in the red. Yeah, I, I was out uh, on the Barker uh, uh, Murray trip uh, back in October, the year before last. And I was listening to Brendan speak to us down in Wilcannia. And he said, the, the river is the heart of the community. So if the river's not well, the community's not well. And especially for the First Nation, the young people are not being able to go down to the river and learn, but not being able to go down to the river and play. They're stuck inside playing video games because it's, the river's gone. The men, uh, uh, the, as I said, 37 years of age, the men are, are committing suicide. The young people are being forced off country by this... Um, travesty and they're disconnected from their land it's just wrong it's just wrong great thank you very much sir you have a question can i just recognize gil berger who was on the australian people's tribunal um panel thank you very much for the work that you've done yeah I, um I, I won't get into the discussion about royal commissions and um which politicians are the good ones and bad ones and so forth. It seems to me that nothing will be done unless there is people's action um, and uh, strong action. And this document, um, the Citizens' Inquiry into the Health of the Barker, Darling River and Menindee Lakes, um, would be a, a useful tool, I think. Uh, much of what this marvelous film has uh, has covered is is also in here because what we did uh, over two weeks we traveled from basically from Wentworth up to Walgett uh, through Menindee um, and we spoke to the people we wanted to hear what the river people had to say uh, about what was being done to them we discuss echocide in here and genocide you know people don't like the G word but that's what's happening out there there is a genocidal process now, you can talk about mismanagement if you want. You can talk about greed and corruption and so forth. But in the end, the most embarrassing thing, as far as I can understand, the most embarrassing thing for this country would be to have a, 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 a genocidal process uh, completed, and that's, that's the way it's going. It is a process now. People are dying. The, the, the uh, law of genocide talks about destroying a community uh, in whole or in part uh, by exactly what's happening, taking away their, their, uh, their right to live a decent life in dignity. Um, so um, if you're involved in struggle, uh, and I hope a lot of you are, uh, struggle against the government, against the big irrigators uh, who are uh, corporate thieves, uh, should be in jail, shouldn't be uh, allowed to get away with what they're getting uh, away with. Um, this is the kind of information I think that uh, you can use because it, it's the voice of the people telling it as it is, the reality of both ecocide 
which unfortunately is not a law yet. There, there's no law against it. Uh, and that's, that's something that there should be introduced in this country and in this state. Um, anyway, uh, Jane you. and I uh, will be uh, circulating some of these uh, for the people to see tomorrow, I guess. Um, but if you want a copy, um, I can, I can uh, send it to you. Just need to get my email. If you want to see me afterwards, that's fine. I'll Great. Be Thank, happy you so to Thank you so much. Thank you so much for you. Just uh, the gentleman there in the blue. I can't quite read what your T-shirt says, but I think it says Darling River on it. Yeah. Darling River Action Group. There you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the previous Darling River Action Group. Yeah. Uh, the, the lawyer on in the uh, film Emma Carmody was talking about illegal actions. Now, there's a water... Man New South Wales has a Water Management Act 2000, and the first priority in that act is water for the environment. And then you get towns and uh, town cities, uh, you get stock and domestic, and the ver very last priority is irrigation. And it's not, it doesn't work that way. The first priority is irrigation. And the, the whole bureaucracy has been set up to help the irrigators. They, they, some of them are trying to change now, but that's how it worked. The bureaucracy was there to look after the irrigators. And the ministers are there to look after the irrigators. And uh, it's, it is illegal. The whole thing's been run in an illegal manner against their own law. New yeah. South Wales Water Management Act. Yeah, thanks very much. Well, well said. Yeah, can I just I take just the last... Um, can I just butt yeah, in there? Oh, sure. Um, Look, it, it really isn't um, equitable and that's not fair. Um, the, the, there's a thriving ir irrigation industry up in the north and probably New South Wales's biggest problem is what's going on in Queensland. So I know that the Minister has been trying her darndest to uh, speak with her counterpart in Queensland for a couple of years now and, and really hasn't made gained much traction. So... That's a problem in itself, isn't it? You know, we have a water minister that won't talk to a water minister, um, as we saw with that fiasco um, at Minco. Look, we, we just must share the water resource much better than what we are now. Our current management practices, our current policies, we really are risking the ecology that we have. Thanks, Julie. And we're going to take the last question over here. Sorry, Does somebody want to answer there's that? A, did, did you want to? Um, <laughs> uh, there's a number of onshore ones. Chris Corrigan, uh, Webster's. Uh, there's about two big blighters who I know very well because they threaten me pretty regularly. So there's a, basically a large um, Chinese investment in water... Canadian investment in water. But that's the problem. In, in New South Wales, they refuse to get a register. They say, oh, you know, Melinda Pavey says it's too confusing. Well, if you can't put a register and you've got no idea how much water you're pulling out, how the hell are you going to solve it? Oh, well, we're still talking about it. So, realistically, smoke and mirrors. To, so, to answer the question, probably five or six really big, huge organisations um, and foreigners... But we just don't know for certain because there's hands in a lot of pockets. But we do know that you've spent $8 billion and not one drop's come down the river system. Um, that's the type of money we've, you've given to them. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of bureaucrats in lots of offices, um, but it hasn't increased the amount of water to us. Yeah, that's right. um, and, and also the, the concentration of licences... Um, over time has meant that the people who are profiting... And let's be clear, every Australian taxpayer, a percentage of those taxes is going to the MDBA. So this, ben this, this impacts every single Australian, not just those that live in the Murray-Darling Basin either. We're all getting ripped off. We just got. We're, we're going to be able to. People can have a chat to these guys after the event. We'll we'll stick stick around for a little while. Um, but I'm just going to take two final questions. A fellow over here, and there's a woman up here who's been asking, waiting for a while. Just a really quick yeah. Question. I mean, I'm just wondering if, if the uh, what you what you call our public broadcasters have been approached and are going to show this. I mean, the necessity of getting the messages across, as you've all emphasised, is huge in the labour. I've been told. 
following us along the line. But basically, we do need to know what this film is about. I think we all saw that. Yep. But basically, is there any chance that the, that the police or the SPS would have shown that had they been approached? Can I answer that one? Um, uh, I don't know if they've already been approached, but certainly uh, we're trying to get this film and as many other films about the region as we can uh, circulated as far and wide as we possibly can. And you've sort of stolen my thunder for the, the close, but one of the things I was going to say is if you've got a community that is... If you can assemble a group of people who'd be willing to see it, um, you know, we'll organise to, to get it down and, and bring a speaker or whatever you need. Like, if, you know, if you, in your suburb you can sort of get a room or something and, um, and get a few people who are prepared to, to sit down and watch it. No, no cost or anything like that. Um, what we want to do is just get in front of as many crowds in Sydney as we possibly can. Um, so tomorrow, for example, we've got a bunch of um, civic leaders through the Sydney Alliance that we're going to meet with uh, in the hope that some of the church groups, some of the trade unions, some of the other groups around Sydney um, will host a similar type event, obviously not with guys from the far west all the time because it's a long way to come, um, but with the film and with uh, with somebody who can talk about the issue because we, we really do need to get this word out. Um, and sadly, you know, the chances of sort of even just one... There have been documentaries, of course, on telly already, um, and we'll try that again. But, you know, the more we can do this as grassroots, um, I think the more we're going to be able to get some success in getting the word out. So... Kate's daughter, Kate, was on, and also Australian Story. Kate was on Crimea River. So, look, ABC's trying their guts out. Kate, Kate's trying guts out. ABC's trying their guts out, but they're getting cut to ribbons with spending money and that's unfair we've been trying seven and ten and nine the project's picking up a few things nine and seven refuse because there's a number of executives from channel nine who made vast amounts of money we won't mention names but isn't it convenient how i won't mention names because i don't want to get sued but how people in high positions in these broadcasters made vast amounts of money and if the public of australia actually knew they'd be very embarrassed so they don't want the story getting out and and, so and and that's 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 one and <laughs> and and then there's another so you might remember the um, ABC show Pumped, the Four Corners episode that came out. So since then there has been an active um, political movement to defund the ABC essentially, because those uh, who who are pulling the strings don't want the truth out there. So this is this is what we're up against. Where's the mic, thanks. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, and I got the. I, I, I was hoping to get the chance at Q and A to talk, but here's my platform tonight. So, you know, I just want to say that it was very sad. Um, I did go on that river run, and I did see. I walked on those beds, and I know, you know, it's 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 very. Um, it's very emotional and to see families that are living out there and breathing, breathing out there, that, that you know, it's, where's the humanity? Where's the human, you know, and, and it's also the health, you know. I know my daughter went swimming out there, ended up with a lot of sores through swimming in those rivers. So, you know, and I don't know what made her, possessed her to go in the rivers, but anyway, she did it. Um, she brought it back with her, um, so... You know, it is very sad and I've seen it for myself and I know what you guys are, you know, where you are living. So it is, it's, it's a very sad journey. Thank you so much and thanks for being with us tonight. Oh. There's a yeah. person who's been very patient. <laughs> That's good. That was all really good stuff. I, I was actually out on the on the Yamagama Baka tour with, with these guys that have been talking about that um, in, um, was that like October, like nearly two years ago? Two years ago, yeah, 2019, and um, I'm a I'm a designer. I work in in, in systems design and, and co-design. Um, and we were out there. Um, and once you see it, like I live in Sydney, I I had no idea what was going on out there. You know, you hear about droughts, 
you don't really understand um, until you see it. And once you see it, um, it's so hard to... Um, uh, you, you can't really unsee it. So um, since then, we've kind of been um, thinking about this problem. And, you know, um, there's a very intelligent man. His name's Bogdan Safula. He would say, um, you can't change the system. You need to create a new system and make the old one obsolete. Um, I think people are very intelligent. People are innately smart. People want to solve problems like this. And I think if they're given the opportunity um, and they're given the, 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 the right question, people will work together and put their differences aside to come, to come together and actually solve the problem. Um, I've been doing a lot of work on these, um, this 2019 um, citizens' inquiry. I've been taking that, and it's a fantastic document. If, if It's all on there online. It's amazing work. Um, and um, that document is a, is a really great asset and input into, into, the, into this work. Um, and I've been transcribing all of these testimonies and making graphic um, visual pieces, which, we're gonna, which we will um, exhibit um, in Wilkenya in um, April. And then I'm sure we will be doing it in Sydney at some time. Um, but a lot of the stuff that these people are saying is about system. It's, you know, it's not being looked at holistically and as a system. And... Um, yeah, I, I guess it's a, a it's a it's a question for you guys. It's, you know, can we really wait for the government? Because you know, when we were out there, we could see how dire the situation is. Can you really wait for the government to solve this problem, or do you think it's possible that if you gave people the platform and three days, to and invited the right people and put them in in a position to come together to solve this problem, do you think it would be something that would be possible? I love you, Rix. <laughs> you're about, I just love the way your mind works. Absolutely, come out. You know, you're always welcome. Let's let's do that. Let's make that happen. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, and thanks for all those questions. I'm sorry we can't get to them all, uh, but we will stick around for a little bit uh, after this. I uh, just before you go, I've just got a, a couple of um, a couple of things that I wanted to let you know about. One is that uh, at the Nature Conservation Council, we've made this one of our big campaigns, um, Save Menindi Lakes. Um, if you go to savemenindilakes.org.au um, you'll be able to get that video that we showed at the start, but also a bunch of other things, and you can sign up for the campaign. Um, on your seats, there should be a little flyer that talks about um, just becoming a voice for nature. Um, we're the peak body for the environment uh, groups in New South Wales, so you, you can't be a member of the Nature Conservation Council, but you can certainly be a supporter. Um, and, you know, one of the things that's tricky is um, you saw in the film uh, somebody said that the professional, the irrigation lobby has got professional people who can turn up to every single government forum. You know, they've got people that can literally spend their whole lives um, sort of marching the corridors of Parliament House in Canberra and Sydney um, and put the irrigator's point of view. Um, but for everybody else, um, it's sort of doing things on the smell of a rag. So one of the things we're hoping to change is by using the, the influence that we've got here in Sydney, um, to sort of change that balance a little bit, but of course that's an expensive thing to do. If you've got any capacity to chip in, whether it's five bucks a month or 500 bucks a month, um, you know, every little bit helps. We need to raise a few hundred thousand dollars a year to keep this campaign uh, running at the level where we're going to be competitive with the irrigators. You know, uh, we want to get to a point where we genuinely can have an equal voice at the table when it comes time to review the Murray-Darling ba uh, Basin Plan in a couple of years' time, do more things where we can bring people from the far west uh, to Sydney and to the rest of the eastern seaboard, uh, do more community events, raise the profile, ideally one day turn on TV commercials and things like that. Uh, so if you've got any capacity... I know that times are tough, but if you've got any capacity to help, that's much appreciated. Uh, the other thing that, uh, as I said earlier, that would be super useful is if you are part of a community of people uh, and you think that there are people who'd be willing to see this film or uh, hear a speaker or just have a talk about some of these issues so that we can spread the word around Sydney, uh, then please do uh, let us know and we'll make sure we can get someone to, to uh, help you out and either get the film played or, or do whatever you want to do in your local area. Um, because we've got just over 100 people here tonight, which is wonderful for Monday night. Um, but, you know, by the end of uh, 2023, when we have to go and suit up for the, for the renegotiation of the Basin Plan, I really want us to have tens of thousands of people in Sydney as part of this network. So that's a big task, and it's only going to work if people like yourselves are able to, um, to spread the word amongst your own networks. Um, so if you go to our website, nature.org.au, um, you'll be able to see all sorts of things that you can do to sign up and, and be involved. Uh, including having a look at our, um, our podcast, webcast show, um, the second episode of which I think was featuring Rob and Jane, where we talked about 
uh, some of the issues down the river. So um, hopefully you'll, you'll get some more stuff to mull over there. I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, I want to thank our four delegates from, from the West. Um, And also keeping our thoughts, our, our comrades um, Derek and uh, Badger, uh, who can't be with us but who are going to join us tomorrow on Zoom for some of our poly meetings. Um, you know, this is the first of a, of a very long journey for us and, and I'm really honoured that uh, you've all decided to be with us tonight. So thanks very much and uh, have a good evening. Safe travels.